Members of the Allied Control Commission for Germany arrive at Marshal Zhukov's headquarters in Berlin to sign the joint agreement. General Eisenhower is on hand to represent the United States. Marshal Zhukov makes it official for Russia, and Monty adds his signature for Britain. The next to ratify the agreement is France's General de Tassigny, who is followed by our own Ike. Official British pictures of the men who will control the post-war destiny of Germany. Hitler's mountain retreat at Berchtesgaden has been transformed into a GI playground. Hitler is gone, but his butler is still on hand, Arthur Kallenberg, who, with his wife, took care of all de Fuhrer's personal needs. None seems very grieved at their loss, if any, and that goes for both the butler's niece and his wife. Yes, the G.I.s have taken over, and the men of the 101st Airborne even have Hitler's lofty eagle's nest at their disposal. He is said to have used it only four times. At the base of this peak is his Berchtesgarten retreat, which was well pounded by Allied bombs. The tread of American feet was never in Hitler's dreams when he had his bomb-proof shelters constructed. This maze of tunnels leads to his private apartment, where he thought there would be safety. His collection of classical music is still intact, but never again to be heard by party leaders. These are Signal Corps pictures. And he could slap you in jail right on the premises. Hitler's idea of a home necessity. Somebody forgot to straighten up the living room before leaving, it seems, but more in order is the bedroom. Comfy looking to Joe after months of foxholes. Hitler, as an art thief, was on a par with Goering, but today Berchtesgarten stands as a wretched monument to his murderous greed. General Patton is warmly welcomed at the White House by his Commander-in-Chief, President Truman. Patton is minus his famous pistols on this visit. He'll return to Germany soon. Harry Hopkins left and Joseph E. Davies returned from abroad to report after making arrangements for another Big Three meeting. Mr. Davies went to London to confer while Mr. Hopkins completed details in Moscow. The meeting will take place sometime within the next five weeks and is expected to touch on the control of Germany and preparations for a peace conference. Another war secret just released by the British who designed it is this amazing fog dispersal installation for airfields. 6,000 gallons of gasoline are released into the system and that's only enough to land one plane. The gas is ignited and in a flash, sheets of flame blaze through the jets creating a blanket of intense heat which forces the fog to rise. Winston Churchill sponsored this life-saving idea which is affectionately known as FIDO meaning Fog Investigation Dispersal Operation. And this is the way it looks to the approaching pilot. The shimmering heat gives the landing plane a phantom-like appearance. Fido made it possible for Allied planes to continue business as usual despite England's heavy fog. When von Rundstedt suddenly drove into the Ardennes in the famous Battle of the Bulge, it was Fido that saved the day by making possible the continued use of air power to bomb Nazi transportation and supply lines. A great boost to the airman's morale. Buns and sausages confiscated from German supplies provide a treat for Norwegian children. Food they haven't tasted during occupation. And the occasion calls for it too, for the country is celebrating its Independence Day, free from German rule after five long years. 25,000 school children march with flags and serenade Prince Olaf as he waves from the balcony.
The children who spent formative years under the Nazi heel give vent to leather lung joy on this day of days for them. Norway, a country that refused to bow to German domination, holds her place proudly among free peoples. Along the picturesque canals of the Italian city of Venice, a new form of transportation conducts G.I. Joe on a sightseeing tour. The amphibious excursion is a real pleasure to these war-weary veterans getting a well-earned vacation from the battle lines. A touch of Venetian swing lulls Joes and Jennies getting an eye full of the Grand Canal in this Italian waterborne jeep. A smattering of Italian goes a long way to make friends. And here's the menace of Venice in person, doing a little rug cutting on the stern. Watch those traffic lights, Skipper. Here they come, by ship, by plane. Three and one half million men. It took nearly four years to move these men to the European front. They must now be moved to within striking distance of the Japs in the next few months. More than 20 million individual trips are involved in this transfer from the Atlantic seaboard to the Pacific coast. Not only will men be moving home for furloughs before shipping out to the Pacific, but some will be moving to hospitals for further rest and convalescence. The job looks impossible. Let's hear what Colonel Johnson, head of the Office of Defense Transportation, has to say about it. This job looks and actually is impossible unless you too help. You can help by staying off trains and inner city buses unless your trip helps win the Japanese war. The vacation season this year coincides with the peak of returning military travel. I ask you to help make the greatest movement in all transportation history possible by spending your vacation at home 